We're going to look at negative exponents today, but first we just want to establish where negative the meaning for negative exponents comes from. So let's have a look at something you're very familiar with, a to the 5 over a3. Remember when we started doing this, we did it with just writing it all out. So we knew that a to the power of 5 just meant you got 5 a's all multiplied together, a to the power of 3, 3 a's all multiplied together. You could then cancel and see you were left with just a times a, which is a squared on the top. Okay, then after we'd done that for a while, we went to the, saw the rule that basically said, look, what you've got is you've got five a's on the top, three on the bottom, and so when you cancel out, you're gonna be left with five minus three a's. In other words, you just could do it quite quickly by saying a to the five minus three, which is a squared, right? Now, if we look at this other one here, a cubed over a to the 5, we're going to see how we can use that to come to what negative exponents mean. So, writing it out, like we did before, we'd have a times a times a at the top, and this time at the bottom is where you'd get your 5 a's, right? Then you're going to cancel, and you can see that what you're left with at the bottom is just a times a, so what you've got at the top this is that, and at the bottom you've got your a squared. Now, if we were to calculate a cubed over a to the 5 using the rule, the rule says we take what's at the top and we subtract what's at the bottom. And so we would get a to the minus 2. And so this tells us very nicely that for all this to make sense nicely, a to the minus 2 must be equal to 1 over a squared. And similarly, we would have that um, a to the minus 3 would be equal to 1 over a cubed. 5 to the minus 10 would be equal to 1 over 5 to the 10. And x to the minus 100 would be equal to 1 over x to the 100. That's our meaning of negative in the exponent. So now you have a new fact to add to your um, exponent rules. And this is a to the minus m is equal to 1 over a to the m. And this is for any number, as long as a isn't 0. Why do we have to exclude a as 0? Because we know what, dividing by 0 is undefined. So 1 over 0 is undefined. So we don't allow a to be 0. But any other number it works for. So it's very important to notice that there's a big difference between whether you've got the negative in the exponent or the negative dealing with the number. The negative in the exponent simply tells you that you're dealing with 1 over. So 3 to the negative 2 means you've got 1 over 3 squared, which is 1 over 9. That's very different to this one here, where the negative just means the number is negative. So you've got 3 squared, which is 9, and then it is negative, so this is negative 9. Okay, so 5 to the negative 2, again, that negative in the exponent just simply tells you you're dealing with 1 over. So what we've got here is 1 over 5 squared, which is 1 over 25. Now here's something interesting. What if we've got 1 over 5 to the negative 2? Well, we're still just dealing with the fact that 5 to the negative 2 means 1 over 5 squared, right? So this is going to become 1 over 1 over 5 squared. Now we've got to remember that this, right, in the fraction line, is the same it means division right so what you've got here is you've got 1 divided by 1 over 5 squared now you've got to remember your division of fraction story remember with division of fractions right you multiply and you flip here and so you get your answer of 5 squared all right, so that all looks very, very hairy. There were a whole lot of things to remember. You first had to remember that 
5 to the negative 2 is just 1 over 5 squared. And then you've got to remember here that this means division. And then you've got to remember how to do division of fractions. But the joy of this here, once you've done it, is you can see something. If you had 5 to the negative 2, it just means you've got 1 over 5 squared. The negative here sends this thing to the bottom of the fraction line. And what's happened here, here where your negative exponent was at the bottom, it actually just sent it to the top and it became 5 squared. Oh, and just if you wanted to complete it, 5 squared is just 25. So just to repeat that, and because it is quite a revolting thing, but it will help us a lot if we get it straight, x to the minus p, that's easy, right? Our rule just tells us negative in the exponent means take it down, right? So it's 1 over x to the p. Now, what happens when we've got this one here, where we're trying to deal with 1 over x to the minus p? Let's have a look at that slowly again. We've got 1 over x to the minus p. We know that x to the minus p just means 1 over x to the p. If we've got 1 over 1 over x to the p, what we're saying is 1 divided by 1 over x to the p. Remembering our rules for fractions, it's going to be 1 times x to the p over 1, which is just x to the p. So 1 over x to the minus p is just x to the p. But if you then keep this in your mind, you've got a something that is going to help you to get very fast at working with these negative exponents. Because what this tells you is that if you've got x to the negative p, it takes it down. If you've got 1 over x to the negative p, it brings it up. And this means if you're given a problem like this one, for example, 3 to the negative 2 over 2 to the negative 3, it actually becomes very quick and easy. Because you're dealing here with 3 to the negative 2, right? Well, this rule here just tells you that you have to take it to the bottom of the fraction, and then it'll just become 3 squared. So what you've got... You've now dealt with this thing here, and it's just become 3 squared. 2 to the negative 3, this whole long story we did here, le ended us with this idea, right? That if you've got 2 to the negative 3, it's just, if it's at the bottom, you can bring it to the top, and it'll just be 2 to the 3. And so you get a very nice quick answer of 8 over 9. All right. Let me just quickly give you one to try for yourself so that you make sure that you know what you're doing here. So what if I asked you what is x to the minus 1 over y to the minus 1? Pause the video quickly and see if you can get that answer. Okay, so hopefully you did it and hopefully you realized. x to the minus 1, the negative in the exponent just says inverted, right? y to the negative 1 it means just bring it up and you get y. And I haven't put the ones in because y to the 1 and x to the 1 are just y, x. Okay, let's look at two further examples. If we had something like 6 times x to the power of minus 5 and we want to write it all with positive exponents, well, the 6 isn't affected, right? It is just a 6 and remains like that. What does x to the minus 5 become? We know it's just 1 over x to the 5. And if we want to put that all together nicely, we'll have 6 over x to the 5. All right, this one. We've got 2x squared at the top of the fraction. And this x to the minus 4, right? Remember, if it's at the bottom and it's a negative, it's going to invert and come up. So it'll come up to the top and become x to the 4. And then we can combine these using our rules that we know because we've got x cubed and x to the power of 4. So it means you've got x times x times x and then another x times x times x. Remember our rule says that we would then just 
add those together and so we'd get 2x to the power of 7. But notice here there is actually another way we could have done this, right? Because remember when we went right at the beginning, if we have a to the m over a to the n, one of our rules is we can just say a to the m minus n. So here we've got x cubed and x to the minus 4. So another way we could have solved this one would be to say, right, the 2 is just a 2, but we've got x cubed, and then we're going to say take away the negative 4. Now we've got to remember our, how to work with negative numbers. We've got 3, subtract negative 4, so we're going to have x to the 3 plus 4, so it's going to be 2x to the 7. Two different ways of doing it. You can do either one, whichever is more comfortable, but you get to the same answer, obviously.